Welcome to the showdown for first place in the Southern Conference, East Tennessee State, visiting Wofford. Of course, all the pregame talk this week circulated around the Bucks. Why not? They're in first place. They are undefeated in the conference. Best start since resurrecting football a few years back for the Terriers. A lot of redemption on the line after a rough one last week at Furman. Wofford home for the first time in six weeks. It's homecoming at Gibbs Stadium. Let's see what happened on this field behind us. Hey, we open this week up. All right, we open the week up by talking about responding. You guys got me? Yes, sir. That's what we talked about. We talked about responding, all right, to what has happened. Respond to what occurred. Well, today's the day. You guys got me? Yes, sir. You learned and you responded all week. Now we've got to take that opportunity as a group, all right, and go execute today. You guys got it? Yes, sir. Now listen, this game is not about anybody but to the guys in this room. You got it? Yes, sir. It's all it's about. Trust one another. It's 60 minutes of you guys doing your job and competing. You guys got it? Yes, sir. Trust. Love one another. And let's go get it done. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Let's go get it done. Let's go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, compete on two. One, two. Compete. First and ten. Joe Newman looking to the sideline. He'll roll left. Blitz, and he gets it off to, to Blake Morgan, who's got close to first down yardage. Going to be a little bit short. Boy, Joe Newman did a great job escaping the blitz from Zach Yancey, and it was Titus Tucker for ETSU who muscled the player out of bounds, but it's a gain of 10. He will get the first down. And the chains keep moving for Wofford. Newman on the end around. That's TJ Luther. We were talking about the speed the freshman has. Cannot get away. That's a nice defensive play by Titus Tucker, but still a great gainer on first down for Wofford. And just outside the five yard line, Andre Stoddard has it. He's got the first down. He's got the touchdown. Touchdown, Terriers. Andre Stoddard, career touchdown number 24. And Wofford forges out to a 9-0 lead pending the extra point. Hey, that was a nice job. ETSU brought a blitz, and then Stoddard ran basically right where the guy came from. Do dove right at the end zone. And uh, looking at the replay, I think he got in. It was close to where his knee hit, but where the ball was, it was close. And, well, there's no replay here today, so uh, they're going to call it a touchdown. Second and nine, Bucks from their own 26. More pressure up the middle, and that forces an incompletion. Austin Herrick took a big hit from Thad Mangum. And Mangum has been a real revelation for Wofford on defense this year. Than 10. Herring keeps it, and he's got that pressure, and nowhere to go. Miles Brown, is the football loose? Wofford saying, yes, it is. Herring doesn't have the football. Now they're coming in from the far side and saying second down. I don't see how that ball didn't pop loose. We'll get another look at it. But Herring spun away from one defender, and Miles Brown just planted him here at Wofford. So ETSU keeps the ball, and Herrick will try to take advantage of that call, and that's a completion. Getting into it here on homecoming at Wofford. Man in motion, Herrick rolls to his right. He's a left-hander. He's going to keep it, and that's going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere, courtesy of Billy Hinton, the Wofford linebacker from Westchester, Ohio. And the Terriers will take over on downs. Mosley now. Give his inside with running room. That's McAfee. Look at Mosley out there. It's a lead blocker. Lennox McAfee, 10-5. Touchdown, Terriers. How many times do you see a quarterback on a play like that get out and provide a lead block? But a great job by Miller Mosley of helping Lennox McAfee out. Somebody had Lennox dead to rights and just didn't wrap him up. And then Mosley got ahead of him and put a block there. Just, well, kind of stood the guy up a little bit. And Lennox has got the speed to get into the end zone. Ball inside the one. He will hand it off, and that is going to be a safety, if not a touchdown. The ball comes loose. Looked like Nathan Walker had it. They're signaling touchdown. It's at least a safety, and now it is indeed an East Tennessee State touchdown. 
Mosley takes the snap. He'll pitch it out. And with running room is Blake Morgan, first down, pushed out of bounds after a gain of about 15. Needed, but they'd like to make it a bit more comfortable than that. Herrick, wide open down the right sideline. That'll be a first down. It'll be a 44-yarder. The kick is up, a little bit of a line drive, but it is true right through the middle. And that will end the first half in the backfield. The give is to McAfee on the dive. Lennox makes one man miss, makes another man miss, showing some great shiftiness, a little swivel hip, eight yard run. Under center is Austin Herrick. That usually means handoff, and it does. And Holmes is stacked up for a loss. Big play by Brandon Brown, sophomore linebacker out of Somerville, South Carolina. Herrick has Holmes to his left. He's back to throw. Steps up to avoid the pressure. Will he run for it? Can't. He's cut off, and that's intercepted. Domo Lemon with the pick for Wofford. It'll be Terrier football deep in ETSU territory. And the senior from Blythewood, South Carolina, has his first pick of the year. Just did a nice job. And again, this is pressure coming up the middle, forcing Herring to move out to his right. Somebody got a hat right on him, and the ball was just cleanly picked off by Domo Lemon, who was in great position. And you love the enthusiasm as he comes to the sideline. One of the first people he's greeted by with a chest bump is his head coach, Josh Conklin. Newman takes the snap. Run pass option. The pitch is to Van Cleave. A lot of speed from that young man. That'll be a first down for Wofford. Newman keeps it. Pitch is to Van Cleave. Great block on the perimeter by McAfee. Van Cleave cuts it inside. Three backs behind quarterback Joe Newman in the bone. Stoddard has it, and he's got the first down. Sat out a series or two in the first half. Stoddard has it up the middle. He's got running room. Andre Stoddard inside the 10, rumbling down to the seven-yard line. T.J. Luther is the wide receiver to the left. Pitch to McAfee, and he will walk in for a Terrier touchdown. Let's first and 10 ETSU, and ball is loose. Ball is loose, and the Terriers have it. The fumble and Thad Mangum is on it. And another, another huge break. This one of their own making for the Wofford. Two from ETSU and one for Wofford. As Lennox McAfee, two scores already. Oh, it was almost three. Lennox McAfee is under center. And the give is right up the middle to Andre Stoddard. Breaks one tackle, falls forward to the three. First down yardage and goal to go again for the Terriers. And Andre Stoddard is starting to... Starting to feel it. Yeah. Joe extends the arms. Shotgun snap. He'll hand it off right up the middle. And that's a Terrier touchdown. Bulling his way in yet again is Andre Stoddard. Taking the snap is Herrick. Little pitch out to Holmes, and he's got nowhere to go. Defense. Third and eight. Holding on to the ball is Newman. Fakes the pitch. Rolls across the 30. We'll see who saw time in the first half. Now Newman scrambles to his left, looking to throw, and he'll let it fly deep down the left sideline. It's kind of a jump ball. That's going to be picked off. In motion is Kelly. Back to pass is Herrick. Little screen set up for Holmes, and blowing it up is Jira Wilson for the Terriers. Got away from it. Now the pump fake from the ETSU quarterback, and down the seam, he's got a man and blasted, but holding on to the football is Kobe Kelly. He'll get it on first down, and this time Quay Holmes is into the end zone for a Buccaneer touchdown. 13-point Wofford lead. Herrick scoots around the pocket, and he's sacked. Coming back to knock him to the turf is Thad Mangum. 15 after the sack. Herrick back to throw on nearly every down. Is that a diving interception? I believe it is. And how about that play by George Beesey of Wofford? And that could just about do it. I'll tell you what, I couldn't be more proud of a, guy, a group of guys. I mean, you talked about responding all week, yep. and you guys came out yeah. at the first quarter, and you guys attacked it. That's right. You attacked it, man, for four quarters. I'm proud of you guys, proud of the effort. That is fun. That is fun. That is fun. Be smart, all right, because it's only 1-0. and all right, We didn't win anything yet, but we took the next step forward. You got to yeah. yeah. Turn the music. Yeah. Yeah.
Terrier with Terrier head coach Josh Conklin. I think I do know what you said this week to the guys. I don't know what you said at halftime, but whatever you said in both instances, it certainly worked today. Yeah, no, they. I mean, I was so proud of a group of guys. I mean, uh, proud of our coaching staff. Uh, I was proud of our players. You know, I mean, we, we amped up the intensity on them, everybody, uh, this week, and they responded like professionals, in my opinion. I mean, they came out and started fast, uh, challenged them at halftime to, to play for 60 minutes and finish the 30 minutes. They came out, and, uh, you know, I felt like we did that. There was a couple lulls in the game um, where we didn't execute like we wanted to, but um, they got after it, and I'm really proud, proud of what they did today. Yeah, no, we did, and, and uh, you know, we, we've started to implement and do some, some different things schematically with some pressures that I think have been beneficial to us. Um, you know, and I think a lot of those things come because you spend a lot of time preparing. Um, our defensive staff really took it personal uh, last week, and, you know, they, they felt like they didn't give um, – didn't show their best uh, as a defense, and then we kind of that kind of trickled down into our defensive players. But they spent a lot of time in the film room. Um, they felt like they had a beat on some things that they could attack, and then you add that with the mentality. And, and uh, man, it was fun to watch for a while. Awesome. No, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, like I said early on in the week, I had a good conversation with Miller, um, good conversation with Joe. We knew we were going to play both of those guys. I felt like they gave us a spark. Um, you know, it's just hard. I mean, it's it's a you got 65 reps. I think is what we took today, and uh, we've got a two quarterback you know system that we've been able to use a little bit, and it, it just helps us. Gives sometimes it gives Joe an opportunity to kind of take a, a step back and say, "Oh, I get what you're saying. I need to pull it here. I need to give it on that look." Um, and the same thing, you know, for Miller being out there. So really happy uh, with how they played. And like you said, I mean, the blocking on the perimeter, the blocking with the offensive line was just uh, really spectacular. Yeah, it was good. It was good last night. To, you know, we had a kind of an, uh, the Terrier ball, that event, was uh, had to go there for a few hours, and which really felt awkward. But it was great to see, um, you know, the Terrier Nation and on homecoming, to be home, to sleep in your own bed, and to wake up and, you know, play. And what a great day. Just a great day. Congratulations. Great win. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, it feels great. It feels great to, to regain our identity, I think. Um, it feels great to obviously get a win on homecoming. I haven't done that yet in my career, but we did that today. And um, I'm very grateful to God for, you know, health and a great game. So I think uh, just, you know, as a team, uh, my coach, Coach Smith, my coaches, all of us, you know, we all push to be better every day. Um, so I think that, um, you know, as we've done that, you know, things just happen. Things just come open. And when you have the opportunity to make a play, you got to make it. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, you know, it's just another game. It's another SoCon game, and every game is important. Every game is a must-win game. So, um, I mean, we came out, did what we were supposed to do, and I'm, I'm very happy for this win. Yeah, I mean, Coach Lane, he sees what he sees, and he gets us in the right play. Offensive line dominates. Joe, he know what he's doing back there. It makes our job easy. Uh, I mean, of course, man. Like, we can say it's just, you know, another game. And it is. Like, we want to go one to know every week. But this right here just, you know, got a bad taste of our, out of our mouths from last week. So, we can, you know, really move on now. I mean, we always – we keep the utmost confidence about ourselves. We know the type of people we can be on and off the field. We know the offense can be exposed. We know defense can shut anybody down whenever they want to. So, I mean, confidence is what we play with. Now that is Wofford football. The Terriers rush for 295 yards, dominate time of possession, and Lennox McAfee and Andre Soddard both in the end zone twice. What a difference a week makes and a great job of preparation by the Wofford coaches all week long. They'll be back right here at Gibbs Stadium next week against Mercer, and when they do, the Terriers will take the field, sitting atop the Southern Conference football standings for now. For Inside Wofford Football, I'm Jim Noble.